Okay, so we're going to finish the unit with some proofs um, involving some of our quadrilaterals. So in example one, it says the diagram below shows a rectangle. So that's key. We're going to use properties of a rectangle with points E and F on side AB. Segments EC and DF intersect at G in angle ADG. ADG, this angle right here, is congruent to BCG, this angle right here. We want to prove that segment or um, side, whether it be, so in this case it's a segment, segment AE is congruent to segment BF. And I haven't zoomed out because I want us to be able to see the picture, right, as well as the two columns below. So I'm going to move it up to there. So using the property of a rectangle, we want to prove that segment AE is congruent to BF. So number two. So properties of a rectangle. Well, um, the angles um, ADG and BCG are part of two triangles. So I'm going to pull those triangles out. So here's a... D, and then all the way up would be F. So we know that this angle, so that's this triangle right here. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. And then look at the other triangle. So let's pull that out. So this would be B, C, E. That's this triangle right here. Okay, so I'm going to undo that, and I know that so far that's what we've got. Well, we know that opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent, so we know that AD is congruent to BC as those are the sides in the rectangle, so let's note that. AD congruent to BC, opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. Okay, and not only do we have opposite sides congruent, we also have four right angles. So angle one, which would be right here in my triangle, and angle two, right here, those are right angles as a rectangle has four right angles. So number three is angle one and angle two are right angles because a rectangle has four right angles. I'm gonna use the symbol this time. And because and looking at the triangles right now, that's an angle side angle. So I need those right angles, step four, to be congruent. All right angles are congruent. And then the triangles are congruent, step five. So in order of congruency, there'll be triangle ADF is congruent to triangle BCE. As we said, by angle, side angle. Okay, now side AE, AE is this much of that triangle and BF is this much of that triangle. So um, we know now though by CPCTC that the whole side AF is congruent to the whole side BE, so that would be step six. So AF congruent to BE by CPCTC. And then EF right here is this part of that triangle and this part of that triangle. Well, I'm going to do reflexive here and then by subtraction property, those two orange segments would be the same. 
So number seven is EF congruent to EF by the reflexive property And then to finish, number eight would be AE congruent to BF by the subtraction property. Okay? Now the second one. So in number two, we're given an isosceles trapezoid. So we're going to use the properties of an isosceles trapezoid. With the bases DC and AB and the non-parallel legs AD and BC. Segments AE, BE, CE, and DE are drawn um, such that these two angles are congruent. So CDE, this angle right here, and um, DCE, oh, I'm sorry, CDE is this one and DC is that one. And we know that AE and DE are perpendicular. So that means this angle right here, angle one, is a right angle. And BC or BE and CE are perpendicular. So this is also a right angle. So that's where I'm going to start. So number two is angle one and angle two are right angles because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. Okay? Um, I want to prove, so actually I should have read that first, triangle ADE, so ADE, and triangle BCE are congruent. And then, and we have an isosceles triangle. So let's focus on those orange triangles and the properties of an isosceles trapezoid. Well, an isosceles trapezoid, we know the base angles are congruent. So this angle is congruent to that angle. And if parts of those angles are congruent, then that means the other part is congruent by subtraction. So let's start with those base angles congruent. So the base angles are angle ADC and angle BCD. Again, the base angles of an isosceles trapezoid. are congruent. And then, I'm going to put numbers here as well, angle 3 and 4 are congruent by subtraction. Okay. Another property of an isosceles trapezoid is that the non-parallel legs are congruent. So next step would be AD congruent to CB. Okay, so the non-parallel legs of an isosceles trapezoid are congruent. Okay? So going back up to those orange triangles, this looks to be um, angle, angle, side. Okay? Um, angle, angle, psi, but I've yet to state that 3 and 4 are congruent, which is what I would need, or I'm sorry, not 3 and 4, but, because that was true by subtraction, but angles 1 and 2, and we need that for angle, angle, psi. So number 6 
would be angle one congruent to angle two. And that's because, again, they're right angles, and all right angles are congruent. I don't like that color, it's too light. So therefore, number seven, the triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side. And then we triangle ADE is congruent to triangle BCE by angle, angle, side. So let's go back up again, okay? Now back up to the picture, we want to show that AEB is isosceles. Well, if the orange triangles are congruent, then we know that AE is congruent to BE by CPCTC. And if this triangle has at least two congruent sides, it's isosceles. So we just need to state sides congruent by CPCTC, and we have an isosceles triangle. So number eight is AE congruent to side BE by CPCTC. And then last, triangle AEB is an isosceles trapezoid, or I'm sorry, triangle. We know the quadrilateral is isosceles trapezoid. So I know that triangle AEB is an isosceles triangle because if a triangle has at least two congruent sides, then it is isosceles. All right, on to number three. And three, we're actually going to skip because I didn't realize it's already in or in the day to notes. So that's one last proof we'll have to look at. So let's move on to number four. All right, number four says we have a parallelogram, A, B, C, D. B, F is congruent to A, F, D, and D, E is perpendicular, I'm sorry. B, F is perpendicular to A, F, D, and D, E is perpendicular to B, E, C. Prove the quadrilateral is a rectangle. So we're starting with a parallelogram, and we need to prove a rectangle. Well, I know the box is here, but because of this and this, I'm going to state that one and two and three and four are all um, right angles, okay? So that's gonna be step two. So I've got angle one, angle two, angle three, and angle four. They are right angles. And that's because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. And in looking at the triangles, or we can say all four, but we know that I want angle one congruent to angle two. So all right angles are congruent. All right, we also know, because we have a parallelogram, that angle A is congruent to angle C, and CD is congruent to AB, okay? Then we have the triangles congruent again by angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side. So step four, we know that angle A is congruent to angle C because we have a parallelogram and opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. And then five side um, AB is congruent to side CD because opposite sides 
of a parallelogram. are congruent. And then we said that the triangles are congruent. So triangle AFB is congruent to triangle CED by angle angle side. Okay. Now how did that help us? Okay, okay we're trying to prove that we have a rectangle. So what's the difference between a parallelogram and a rectangle, okay? Um, we're actually, I should read this more closely, we're trying to show that this BEFD is a rectangle, okay? Well, we know that BE is congruent to now ED by CPCTC, so number seven, BF is congruent to ED by CPCTC, okay? Um, geez, if we could prove BE um, DF a parallelogram, then um, if we approve BEDF a parallelogram, then a parallelogram with a right angle is a rhombus. Well, one of the things that I know that I didn't mark is that BC is congruent to AD because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So I'm going to go back and add that to here. B, C, congruent to A, D. And we also know that, let's grab the orange, that A, F is congruent to C, E, also by C, P, C, T, C. So A, F. Um, is congruent to, that's an E, C by CPCTC, then therefore FD is congruent to BE by subtraction. So number eight, BE congruent to FD by the subtraction property. So let's go back up. So in this quadrilateral right here, we now have this pair of opposite sides congruent, this pair of opposite sides congruent, so it's a parallelogram. And then a parallelogram with this right angle is a rectangle. So we have two more steps and we're done. So number nine, we can state that BEDF is a parallelogram And then we finish by stating that BEDF is a rectangle. Whew, this is a long proof. So nine, we had a parallelogram because a quadrilateral with both pair of opposite sides congruent is a parallelogram. Then last, a parallelogram with one right angle is a rectangle. And we have one last one, number five, but it's shorter. It's only seven steps. Um, so let's see what this one says to finish. We have parallelogram ABCD with some perpendicular lines. 
So um, because of this, this is a right angle. And because of this, this is a right angle. And then CE is parallel to CF. So I'm going to take, OK, this right triangle, and we draw it to the side. And I'm going to take this right triangle and redraw it on the side. And facing the same direction. So the first one, let's first draw them and label. So this would be the B. The right angle one is at E and C. The other one is D up here, right angles at F, and the C is here. Okay? So one and two are right angles, and all right angles are congruent. So let's state that in number two and three. So angle one and angle two are right angles. And then angle one is congruent to angle two. So number two is because perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. And number three, all right angles are congruent. So let's go back up to the triangles now. Um, we know that angle C is congruent to angle C by reflexive, and then the triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. So number four, angle C congruent to angle C. And number five, triangle BEC is congruent to triangle DFC. So four is the reflexive property. And five was this time angle, side, angle. So now let's go up to our picture of the quadrilateral. So let's grab pink. We know that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Whoop. Um, but what we need for a parallelogram between a rhombus, the difference between the two, is that all sides are congruent. Well, it turns out that BC is this side, and DC is this side. Those are the consecutive sides. So, Essentially, we're stating all sides congruent because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Um, so therefore, if now BF is congruent to CD, right, two lines, I mean, this is also congruent and they're all four sides. Okay, so we need to state number six that BC is congruent to DC. And that was by C, P, C, T, C. And then seven, we now have A, B, C, D, A rhombus. And that's because number seven, if a parallelogram has adjacent or consecutive they mean the same thing. If a parallelogram has adjacent sides congruent, then it is a rhombus. 